Okay, how you guys doing? I uh, hope that your day has been going well. But uh, yeah, let's dive right into it. Um, this is sorry on three different shading techniques that you can do for your digital art. Uh, more specifically, more of a, like an anime approach. But I'm gonna dive right in and try to make this video as short as possible. Um, yeah, so I start off. I throw my base colors in there. Bam, get them in there. Get them in there. Um, you actually see that I run through the cell shading process a couple times because I just didn't like the way the light was, I didn't like what was happening. So I just, you know, eventually deleted and kind of tried different light setup, but I'll still explain why. And, uh, yeah, so I got my, um, base colors in there and then I'm going to grab a dark purplish color, coolish color, just something slight for this. Not too crazy. Um, Add on multiply, drop the opacity, and then you got your shading layer done essentially. Um, I start off with like this bluish thing. Um, really, not for any good reason, but now I'm looking at it. I mean, I guess it helps because it's a popping color. But I do go all back over that layer and just with like purple, um, like a mask, and do a purple all over it so that color can be darker. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let it play for a little bit and then, um, yeah, I'll come back. done so far was you know finesse the shading part and now I'm just jumping into highlights I uh, made a new layer grab the bright nice yellow not too much saturation excuse me um put the blending mode on add so it can really pop and then drop the opacity a little bit and uh now I'm just adding like a red tint over the face because it was looking really washed out and pale still a little pale but that's okay um, I'm also going to color the line art just to soften it up. Um, I probably should have cleaned up the lines before I <laughs> did anything, but that's okay. That's okay. It's all cool. Uh, you know, I kind of, sometimes I kind of like the rough look of the sketching lines or whatever. Um, yeah. So now I'm going to move on to, I think the painting style of shading. And this is where things get a little bit complicated. Um, and yeah, so basically, um, now you have to be more aware of how the face um, curves and the planes, I guess. Um, I went for a pretty simple approach. Um, and I mean, I guess I'm usually more used to painting anyway. Um, the cell shading, you know, I know how to do it, but I've been going with the painterly route anyway. Um, usually I would merge the line layer with the colors and then just kind of keep painting so it looks right. But to save some time and to keep my stress levels down, um, we're going to do it this way. So I dropped in a warm color on this great background and immediately, you know, I think it's better to start from dark and then move up. 
So that's kind of what I did. I got a lighter, more muted color, not a saturated, and just started painting it, uh, carving out those shapes. Um, yeah, this one is less. I mean, I can do a tutorial on a form if you guys want me to, if that's something you guys need, at least more of a, I know there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube already um, covering that. But if you guys need like a, I guess, a more simpler way, because I know they can be really deep, um, I guess I can do that too. But uh, all I'm doing is really just following my lines. Um, you know, they provide a good, uh, they provide a foundation. I'm sorry. They provide a foundation for what you're trying to do. Um, I'm just really paying attention to the form. Uh, I started carving out this eye. And uh, after I finish all this, I bring all these drawings into Photoshop and uh, liquefy the face a little bit because the eyes were really messed up, kind of, in my personal opinion. Um, yeah, but that's a pretty easy process. Uh, so you really should be paying attention to hard and soft edges when you're doing this process. Um, if something, um, for example, is close to an edge and it's casting a shadow, it's usually sharper. So like if I put my hand, if I put one finger directly on top of the other one, the shadow of cast would be kind of sharp. But if I move it back a little bit, it softens up uh, as, um, excuse me, the further the fingers become. Um, and that's kind of the philosophy or theory that I go by when I'm applying these soft and hard edges. Um, you do need hard edges. Um, it's kind of the balance that we all, we all play. Um, with our hard edges, um, your drawing might look muddy, um, blurry, washed out, you know. Um, yeah. Try not to use pure blacks. That's just kind of rule of thumb in any uh, traditional painting, which is why I don't really use it as much in this. Uh, I get pretty dark in the values, but I never use like a black because it really like, it's just kind of, it's a little too strong, you know. It's not a really, I don't, as far as, if I remember correctly, there aren't any uh, pure, like, blacks in life. Not often, at least. So, sometimes you do gotta go a little dark, and as artists, we can use that. Um, I just don't see much need for it here. I do go pretty dark, though. Um, yeah, I'm really just messing around. When it comes to the hair, I kind of just, you know, loosen up a little bit. Um, not really worried about it. Just, just some general uh, lights and shadows. Uh, just make sure you have fun with this process. You know what I mean? So you're not trying to, you know, this isn't about getting a perfect image. Um, at least not yet. If you want to get a perfect image, it's going to take you time. But when you're still learning, you know, just have fun with it. You know, experiment. See what works best for you. And then you can go and make your plastic pieces or whatever. Um, so yeah, that painting section is pretty much done. And now moving on to the more in between. Um, this is like a soft cell shaded. So what I did already was uh, really going off what I said earlier, starting from dark and moving to light after starting light and moving light. I mean, starting dark and moving light, sorry. Um, so all I did, got my base colors in there, put a dark uh, purple, I guess, tint over the whole thing. Did another layer of the shadows, actual shadow shapes. And another did a layer on top of that, um, highlights. Highlights are an add as my blend mode and my shadows are multiply, drop opacity a little bit. I'm always dropping opacity just to kind of, you know, you might like, some people like that more dramatic effect, but I like a little bit more subtlety. Um, really just rushing in the eyes just to get them in there so it can look right. Uh, yeah, all I'm doing now is adding a little add on the eye and, you know, add on the specular as well. Um, one thing to note, you know you're doing well if you hide your lines and it still pops. You know, there's still a great contrast. You still can see the form. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this tutorial. Um, like I said, as I get closer to an edge, it sharpens. And the more, the broader the shape, uh, the the edge is softer. I hope this helped. Uh, if you have any questions at all regarding anything in this video or anything at all, 
uh, leave it in the comments below. I'll be glad to help you out or if I have to make a full video, you know. Um, if you like the video, give it a like, share it with somebody else who needs some help. I don't know. Um, I know this video wasn't very, uh, it wasn't too in-depth, but that was just to save some time. Uh, in total, all of the um, footage um, is probably accumulatively like at least an hour. That's at least. Um, maybe an hour, 30 minutes total. I don't know. You know, I wasn't trying to make a super long video because it was short and get straight to the point. Um, yeah, here's the final. You know, I added a little effect on it to fix the anatomy a little bit. But other than that, yeah, that's about it. Uh, yeah, see you guys next time.